Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. I've seen that I have more subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Please, if you've not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be sharing on proof of funds. I've been getting a lot of questions concerning proof of funds for Canadian beta application. So I'm going to be sharing information on that. Um, proof of funds you need to show for your student visa application, open work permits, how much you need to have, who can sponsor you, statement of account, a lot of information concerning proof of funds. And uh, in this video too, I've also answered questions that people have concerning proof of funds. I just generalized it and answered a lot of questions about proof of funds. So do well to keep watching if you want to understand proof of funds for your Canada visa application. Proof of funds is evidence that you have the financial capability to take care of your tuition and living expenses when you're moving as an immigrant into Canada. The immigration officers want to see this and be sure that you can sustain yourself when you move into the country and that you're not going to be a liability when you move into Canada. There are several ways to show proof of funds and I'm going to be um, talking about them based on what is shared on the Canadian Immigration website. The first one is proof of a Canadian bank account in your name if you've transferred money to Canada. You can open a bank account in Canada and then transfer money into that bank account. You can check if it's possible to open an account from your country in Canada in your name so that you can transfer money into that account to show as proof of funds. Next one is a guaranteed investment certificate, GIC, from a participating Canadian financial institution. This is a fixed term deposit for a period of time that comes with interest you just put in your money there you can't touch it until that period of time is over it can be for weeks and it can be for months you can let them know that when your visa is approved and you get into canada you have access to the money some persons prefer doing that because they want to let the visa officer know that the money that they have actually kept aside is really for school is not to do something else the next one is Proof of a student or education loan from a bank. So there are several loans you can use to um, finance your education. We have loans like Empower. A lot of people get that. That can pay your tuition and have to pay back in, um, in a span of 10 years. So a lot of persons get loans like that. Because these loans will not be given to you until you are granted your visa and then you start school. Um, they pay your tuition directly to the school. They don't hand over the money to you. If you've been approved to get these loans, you can submit um, the letter of approval together with your um, visa application to show that these um, loan organizations are going to finance your education. The next one is your bank statements for the past four months. This is very, very important because it shows the inflow and outflow of money into your account. You can submit a bank statement um, longer than four months. Um, some people prefer to submit um, six months, some one year. So, but whatever bank statement you are submitting, make sure that um, the inflow of money into your account is balanced. Some people make the mistake of um, just depositing a lump sum, huge sum of amount into their account um, from nowhere. Meanwhile, the inflow of money that has been coming into the account is not tallying with the lump sum that they have. Um, maybe cases where you actually sold the property or um, you got a lump sum from your sponsor, you can explain that in your statement of purpose, but ensure that your bank statement makes sense. The next thing to consider also is um, the balance in your account. Um, is the balance in your account enough for your tuition and living expenses? In order to share more of this, I'm going to share what's on the Canada Immigration website. According to this table, you as a student, you need 
10,000 Canadian dollars for your living expenses. So you need 10,000 Canadian dollars for your living expenses, aside from having your tuition in your account. For the first family member that is joining you, you need 4,000 Canadian dollars for that person. And then for every additional accompanying family member, you need 3,000 Canadian dollars. So if you are a student and your spouse is joining you, you need 10,000 Canadian dollars for your living expenses in addition to your tuition. And then for your spouse, you need 4,000 Canadian dollars for living expenses. And then if you have any child, for each child is going to be 3,000 Canadian dollars. This is an example shown on the website. I'm going to share the link in the description of this video so you can check yourself. Um, as you can see, um, this is a student and two family members. Living expenses, $10,000 for the student, $4,000 for the first family member, and $3,000 for the second family member. So the total of living expenses needed for this family of three is 17,000 Canadian dollars. And remember, this is aside the tuition you have. If you're going for a one year course, show your tuition for one year. If you're going for a two years course, the minimum you can show is tuition for one year together with your living expenses. But I'll advise you show tuition for the two years because some people get um, refusal based on not having enough funds to show complete tuition. And also, for your statement of account, you can gradually build this account. Keep building it in months till you finally get um, the total of what you need to apply for your visa. And then, if you have any lump sum, you can explain it in your SOP. I had a lump sum that was in my account two days before I printed my statement of account. Um, I got this lump sum from my husband. So in my application, I had to explain where the lump sum was coming from and why I got that lump sum. Even for one of the families I helped get their visas, um, there was also lump sum in the wife's account. And um, I had to explain in their application why that money was in the account and who sent it and um, why the money was sent. I shared a video on how I was able to get their visas approved. You can do well to watch it if you need more information on family visa application. So explain whatever lump sum you have. Every lump sum in your account is questionable because it will look as if you got the money from somewhere and then you are borrowing the money to do your application. And then when you are done with your application, you are going to return the money. So in order to get a high chance of approval, don't do that because that is questionable. The next one is a bank draft that can be converted to Canadian dollars. So if you have a bank draft that can be converted to Canadian dollars, you can um, share this as your proof of funds. The next one is proof you paid your tuition and housing fees. For some schools, you are required to pay a tuition deposit before you are given your letter of acceptance, which you can use to apply for your visa. So the receipt of that tuition deposit can be used to show that you have deposited something. Some persons pay a year tuition or they pay the complete tuition before doing their application. But I would advise not to do that because, for instance, if your visa is refused or if you want to change your school, it's going to be kind of difficult to get back your money. Some schools don't even return back your money. There's no refund once you've paid. Some schools take a lot of time. And also some schools don't return your complete tuition. It's better you pay a deposit. And then in your SOP, you can state um, that when granted your visa, you are going to pay the full amount. That is what I did. I paid my tuition deposit of 7,900 Canadian dollars. The amount depends on your school. That is the amount for my school. Some schools, um, $200. So I did that and I showed proof of payment. And then my sponsor mentioned that when granted my visa, um, the balance of the tuition is going to be paid. So if you have your receipt of tuition, 
or tuition deposits added to your proof of funds um, in your application. The next one is a letter from the person or school giving you money. So who can sponsor you? Your family member can sponsor you. Your friend can sponsor you. Um, or someone outside your family can sponsor you. You just have to show a proof of relationship. Um, if you are being sponsored by your uncle, maybe your mother's brother, you can add the birth certificate of your mom and then birth certificate of your uncle to show that you are related to him by blood. Same applies for um, to any of your family members that is sponsoring you. Just ensure that you have proof of relationship. For me, my sponsor is my elder sister. So I added her birth certificate and my birth certificate as proof of relationship. I also added pictures of us together. So whoever is sponsoring you, just try to um, show proof of relationship. You can't just bring anybody from anywhere to sponsor you. You need to show that because it's going to be questionable if there is no proof of relationship. In the letter of sponsorship from your sponsor, your sponsor can mention reasons why he or she is willing to sponsor you in school maybe like how you are a good student how you the person has been taking care of you how the person doesn't mind keep taking care of you just look for good reasons i think i spoke of that in the video i shared on um how i was able to get my visa approved so if you want more on that you can watch the video the proof of funds can also come from business or personal account if it's coming from a business account do show proof of business show um cac documents some people go to the point of showing um, their tax documents too if you have your own business and you are using the business account alone to sponsor yourself i would advise you move the money from your business account into your personal account bit by bit because if the money is still in your business account it looks as if oh that money in your business account is uh completely for business and also aside for your tuition and living expenses in canada people usually ask if their sponsor needs to send the money they have for their school into their account you can do that but i think it's better to show um your sponsor's statement of accounts because it also shows where your sponsor is getting the money from your sponsor's statement of account to show proof of inflow of income and then um, in addition to a letter of sponsorship you can also add your sponsor's letter of employment um bank statement of your sponsor i explained this well in the video i shared on how i was able to get my visa application so you can um, watch that video to know how to arrange and make your documents um, for your sponsor since I used the sponsor for my application. The next one is proof of funding paid from within Canada if you have a scholarship or are in a Canadian funded educational program. So if you have scholarship for your study, you can um, show proof of that scholarship because if you get approval for a scholarship, you are going to be given a letter of approval. So that letter can be added to show proof of funds. Some scholarships cover tuition and living expenses. Some scholarships just cover tuition alone. So if yours is just covering tuition alone, I would advise you have um, an additional account, statement of account, to show some money to cover for your living expenses. In addition to your scholarship covering your tuition and living expenses, you can also show um, maybe a little amount of money there to uh, take care of yourself for a while so you, you have access to your scholarship funds because when you come into canada sometimes you will not immediately get your scholarship uh, it may take maybe one or two weeks for you to get your scholarship even if it's not your personal account it can be from a sponsor there's also something else you can add to your proof of funds that is assets if you have um, any assets maybe landed um, properties house cars you can add it to your proof of funds you can add proof of ownership of these assets to your proof of funds to show that if at any time you need money you can sell these assets and get money from them um some people also use it to show um proof of home ties maybe if they have um lands or houses in their home country they use it to show that 
they have uh, um, property back in their home country and they are willing to go back. But this also shows that if you need money at any time, you can actually sell your assets to get money. So you can do that. Even if you have a car, you can add um, your car document. I also did that. I added my car documents to my application. So this is the information I can share about proof of funds for Canadian visa application. Um, I hope it's helpful to you. If you want to understand more on how to group and arrange your documents, do well to watch my other videos. Thank you for watching. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please do that. Please also share and like my videos. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.